What is that? Coffee brewer. Are you sure it's not in ultrasonic jewelry? It's a coffee brewer. Okay. Brew some coffee with it then. Okay. What is happening? You're just gonna stare and growl for 20 minutes? No. It's crazy because you just make it a cake and it's something you do all the time. Mini sandwich cakes. This looks like quite a simple challenge, but what we're In coffee, there are many different variables that affect extraction. Things like time, temperature, water, the kind of coffee you use, agitation, particle size, and maybe even sound. Now when I say sound, what I'm talking about are ultrasonic waves. Why does that keep happening? This is an ultrasonic cleaner. It's also a coffee brewer. Let me explain. Now I know what you're thinking. James Hoffman has already made this video. And yeah, that's true. Here it is, you should totally go watch it. Please go watch it. My original hypothesis was a little bit different in that I thought ultrasonic waves could be used to brew whole bean coffee, which yes, is a ridiculous notion. But current limitations, uh, i.e. It, it didn't work, led me to make a video about sonication brewing as a whole. I'm still investigating. You'll even see that I commented on the video two years ago when it came out. I was gonna try this in a month's time and well, that took a little bit longer than I thought it would, didn't it? At the tail end of this video, you're gonna watch me request other YouTubers with more viewership to make a video on the same subject as if James didn't already. But to be fair, James' subscriber count at that point was only 316,000 subscribers, which yes, I know is like 316,000 more subscribers than I have. Thank you. Uh, and that's all. Okay, enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you, bye. In this metal box are these devices called transducers. And when powered on, they vibrate at a super fast rate, creating high frequency ultrasonic waves. When these waves transmit to a solvent such as water, the solvent is forced to move back and forth very rapidly. When they move in, the solvent compresses, and when they move out, tiny voids or bubbles form. And then the bubbles implode with such force that contaminants adhering to surfaces are dislodged and blind holes, cracks, and recesses are penetrated. That's from the Wikipedia article, anyway. Now, this phenomenon is known as cavitation. So the idea is that we can use cavitation to increase extraction in coffee beans. And really, this should be thought of as agitation, just on an extreme level. The use of ultrasonics for extracting compounds from plant-based and fibrous materials isn't new. It's actually already used widely in a number of commercial and scientific applications, such as in cosmetics and alcohol production. Here's a great video by Stillit on ultrasonic whiskey aging. Totally check it out, even if you're not into spirits. This process even has an official term, sonication. And sonication has already been used with coffee. Research and experimentation has already been done and articles have already been published. I've linked them below in the description, along with videos where these same scientists use sonicator probes to extract cold brew. Yeah, like this is already a thing. 
Research has found that ultrasonic waves work to induce cavitation in coffee beans to extract more efficiently than heat and water may do on their own. They cite increased triglyceride content, lower antioxidant content, increased color and flavor, though that can be subjective. There aren't really an incredible number of products on the market that make use of this technology, though I have seen two, the Osma and the Sonic Dutch. And if you know of any others, please comment below. So I wanted to try this myself and settled on this, the DK Sonic 3 liter ultrasonic cleaner. Now, why an ultrasonic cleaner? When I started the process of making this video, I was looking for the most cost-effective option. Now, there are a ton of these same types of cleaners floating around on Amazon of various tank sizes, power outputs, transducer amounts, features, etc. There are two main types of sonicators, bath type, like this one and probe type, which are generally of lab grade and are much more expensive. This one has two transducers. They fire 40 kilohertz and it heats up to 80 Celsius or 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to run two tests today on camera. I've already chosen what variables I want to test going into this. This is based off of a number of previous tests I've already run, all of which were unsuccessful. I'm going to start this test and then I'll talk about those later after this test is done, um, just so I can show you the cool stuff first and explain how it all works later. Today's tests will be with light roasted coffee, which I will ground. Uh, it will be a setting 10 on the O dial with Gen 2 burrs installed. They'll both be for five minutes long. One will be at room temperature and the other will be with heat applied. And we're gonna crank it all the way up to the max of 80 Celsius on this. Then I'll strain them, filter them, talk about the previous tests, and finally, I'll taste them and let you know what I think. So let's get started. research one more time. Research indicates that brewing with sonication or with ultrasonic assisted extraction increases extraction of triglycerides like fats and oils, caffeine, and key volatiles. It has a negative effect on the extraction of antioxidants and purportedly improves color, flavor, and body. Now, researchers aren't quite sure why the antioxidant content is lowered, but one theory is that Sonication is also increasing the extraction of free radicals, and these antioxidants are reacting with the free radicals, and that's why we have a lower number of antioxidants. These tests were most likely done with a probe-type sonicator, which is a potentially important detail that we'll get to later. My first four tests, I tried to brew with whole bean coffee. Yeah, I tested for various times and temperatures and they all didn't work, surprise, surprise. The result was like thin coffee water. Mmm. You see the transducers in the bath are pointed in the middle left and the middle right. And what ends up happening is the beans kind of just get pushed out of the way. They don't get caught in the implosion radius as it were. They were still getting hit by the waves, but it was so much less effective. Additionally, this machine that I have can only be run for about an hour before it will overheat. I did try brewing 
in the bath with the beans and trapped in like a glass jar. But for some reason, the jar, it, it felt like it was acting as a buffer to the waves. One idea I came up with uh, that I haven't tested for yet is fixing the beans in place with like mesh baskets. And that could potentially work. My next two tests, I ground the coffee, thank God. I used a dark roast coffee called Starry Eyes by Dark Matter Coffee. It's not a coffee with a huge amount of body, but it is pretty balanced. It's got chocolatey, slightly roasty flavors. And I wanted to try a dark roast on this to begin with because dark roasts are, you know, theoretically easier to extract. They require less heat and a coarser grind. And I let one batch go for five minutes and one batch go for 10 minutes, both at room temperature. I did a ratio of one to 16, like a drip ratio, because I was expecting the sonication to be more efficient at extracting the coffee. Disclaimer, I don't know how many hours under sonication it equals how many hours in normal time. I drained and filtered all three batches and the results were odd. The sonicated batches, even after being filtered through a paper filter, were super cloudy. The filter paper kept clogging, and this could have been due to excessive microfines, or it could have been due to the increased triglyceride content as cited in the research. And they tasted really bad. They didn't taste like water this time around, but they didn't taste like coffee either. Uh, they had this like weird astringency, bitterness, those are not the right words but they were the closest ones I could think to use to explain how they tasted. If there was a word I wanted to use to describe it, it would just be wrong. They tasted wrong. There's this video by James Hoffman uh, where he has a lab grade centrifuge. And the point of the video is to filter coffee using the centrifuge. And one of the first tests that he does is he filters espresso. And he runs it through the centrifuge and it is divided into three parts. And at the bottom are all like the particulates, all the solid matter. And in the middle is like the very, very filtered coffee. And then on the top is like this thin layer of like fat. And I'm just gonna let you watch the results for yourself. Oh no. Exactly. So my theory here is that the reason the filter paper is clogging and the reason for this weird taste is because of the increase in triglycerides extracted in the sonication process. Ultrasonic waves also extract a number of key volatiles and increases solubility of compounds that we don't normally taste in coffee at certain levels and maybe for a good reason. There's even a point in one of the research articles where it's noted that while phenol extraction is higher, ketone extraction is lower than any other type of coffee brewing method. Ketones being responsible for caramel, butter-like, and fruity odor notes. Now there are a ton of compounds in coffee that create the flavor profile that you'll taste in any one bean, but it should be noted that sonication seems to effect, sometimes even drastically, the normal ratio of these compounds. So that might be why it tastes so off. So my thoughts going into today's test were maybe 10 minutes is too long, maybe five minutes is too long, maybe I need to use heat, maybe instead of dark roast I should use a light roast coffee because dark roast coffees have more fats and oils. So I thought I would change the variables to answer those questions and see where we land. So how did we do? It doesn't look like coffee, it looks like pond detritus. Okay, I'm gonna try it. So we have the room temp slurry, room temp filtered, heated slurry, heated filtered. So we'll start with room temp. It's not that bad this time. Still tastes a little weak. It's more indicative of the coffee that we actually brewed. Supposedly chocolatey and sweet. I think if you gave it to me with my eyes closed, I might think it was coffee. All right. Let's taste the filter. Oh. 
That's very different. There's like a fruit note in there now. Like kiwi. A little cleaner. I mean, obviously we filtered it less like coffee. If that makes any sense. I think it does. I might be willing to drink that again, but maybe not that, which I find strange. Okay, so we're gonna go for the heated coffee now. We got some acidity, some juiciness, slightly sour, kind of bitter, more like coffee, less sweet than the one we filtered. Am I tasting the paper filter? It's not good. It's weird. I don't know why I like the unfiltered versions better. I'm wondering if that has something to do with the paper filter. It's weird. Here's my final theory. Because I'm using a bath type sonicator, there's a problem with consistency. The transducers, they fire at the middle left and the middle right of the bath. And what this means is that Particles are either getting pushed out of the way to the edge of the bath, or they're not getting even coverage. So some particles are getting a lot of treatment and others aren't getting extracted at all. And that's why I think we have this strange marriage of it tastes thin and under extracted and at the same time tastes over extracted and weird and off. For now, I feel like I'm in the information gathering stage. I'm still doing research. I'm still reading the same articles that I have shown in the video. There's a lot of information to work through. I hope to turn this into a series and experiment more on how sonication can be used to more efficiently extract a good cup of coffee. I would love to try a probe type sonicator to increase consistency. As much as I would like to purchase one, they're like thousands of dollars. I don't know if that means finding a science friend who has one and borrowing it from them. Also, the one I have is like super loud and annoying and for whatever reason, if I get too close to it, it makes my blood all tingly. Uh, yeah. So I'd like to try like insulating it somehow, maybe build an enclosure. And then I want to filter the coffee through an AeroPress, just get a little bit more pressure going with the filtration to try to strain out more of that like fat and oil content and maybe even using some acids in the brew at small amounts, like citric or tartaric acid. Now, I'm assuming that the cold brew industry as a whole isn't using this technology, which I could be totally wrong about. But if they're not, maybe this could help. Maybe it could be a total game changer. To conclude, what I think would be cool is if a YouTube coffee person with maybe just a little bit more viewership, so to speak, could do a video on this topic. Somebody bigger than me could just help get the ball rolling and just expose this to so many more coffee people that might like to try experimenting with this. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video. I'm very curious to hear what everyone has to say on this. What do you think of Sonication? Do you want to try it? Do you own an Osma or a Sonic Dutch? Anyway, uh, in my next video, I will be reviewing and customizing another fellow product. Peace.